Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the first part in a series I'm doing on Can a Christian, a truly born-again person, lose their salvation? Today's verse text is Matthew 7.22. Anyone that has a disagreement that thinks you can lose your salvation, if you're interested in talking about this, you can email me at kevinsbiblicaldiscussions at yahoo.com and I will get back to you. And if you are interested, I can set up a time for us to talk about this on stream. Uh, for everyone else, uh, please leave a comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I look forward to hearing from all of you and anyone that has a disagreement, reach out to me. Let's talk. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. So here we go. Does Matthew 7, uh, 21 through 23 teach that a Christian can lose their salvation? Absolutely not. Let's get into it. Jesus says in verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So these are people that are saying they admit he is God, Lord, Lord. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. We're going to get back to that in a minute. What is the will of the Father? Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Okay. So let's start with verse 21. What is the will of the Father? Here's the will. John six thirty nine, And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, Jesus speaking, that of all which he has given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. So the will of the Father is that you believe on the Son. Now let's break down Matthew 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Sounds good, right? But here is the problem. These are people that are pointing to their works. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? If you were standing before Jesus... And, you know, he's like, why should I let you into my kingdom? Why should I let you into heaven? The last thing you should do is point to your works. You should be saying, Lord, it's because I trusted what you did. Your sacrifice, what you've done on the cross, it was sufficient to pay for my sins, and I've trusted that. These are people that are trusting in their works. These are people that Jesus says in verse 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who work iniquity. So Jesus never knew them. That word know, it's, um, it means an intimate knowledge. Jesus never intimately knew them. And I'm about to show you right now that Jesus intimately knows all of his sheep. Let's take a look at John 10. John 10, start at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. So there's the know when Jesus said, I never knew you to the people pointing to their works. Jesus saying he knows his sheep here. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. Not temporary life, eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So Jesus is perfectly clear here in John 10, 27 through 28, that he knows his sheep, he gives them eternal life, and they can never perish, and no one can ever take them out of his hand. So he knows his sheep. So these ones where he says, depart from me, ye who work iniquity, I never knew you. He's saying, I never knew you. But at the same time, why did he say, depart from me, ye who work iniquity? What does that mean? Let's take a look at this. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, 
he is guilty of all. So when Jesus said, depart from me, ye who work iniquity, uh, which means lawlessness. How are they lawless? Well, because this verse tells us that if we break even one of God's laws, we are guilty of all of it. The only way to keep God's law is to keep it perfectly. If you only sin one time, break one law, you have broken the entire law and therefore have never kept it. So you would be a worker of iniquity. You would be lawless, according to James 2.10. In conclusion, the many that say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, and they point to their works. That's the problem. They're pointing to their works. They didn't trust Jesus. Verse 23, he professes he never knew them. And I showed you in John 10 that he knows all of his sheep. And they can never perish. And he calls them workers of iniquity because they have never kept his law. And that is the problem. Everyone who is outside of Christ, everyone who has never been born again, in that final day will be judged according to the law. Those who are born again, we are looked at as law keepers. We are justified by faith. Jesus kept the law perfectly for us, and because we trust him, we are considered law keepers. Those who have never accepted the free offer of salvation from Jesus Christ, well, their standard is impossible. They have to perfectly keep the law. Only one sin, just one sin, makes you a lawbreaker, and you have never kept any of it. So it is a state of hopelessness, and that's why Jesus says, Depart from me, ye who work iniquity, because you are lawless, and you have never trusted the Savior.